Okay. So the look at the last, very last Rashi in this week's parasha. What's that? It talks about the person who steals, withholds money from another, from another Jew. So um, the end of Vayikra, the last four psukim in Vayikra from Maftir and Vayikra. If you have a little chitas booklet, it's on page Lamed Aleph and Vayikra. Oh, here. Page Lamed Aleph and Vayikra, if you have the chitas book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which pasuk? Maftir. Pasuk Chav Dalet. The left side. Chav Dalet. On the right side. On the right column. So... A person withholds money from someone else, and then he swears to say that he didn't withhold the money. So, and he and he lies about it. So look at one pasuk earlier, but at the top of the page. He has someone else's money. He stole the money. Or it was money for business and he lied and he kept the money. Or it was a picotin and he lied and he kept the picotin. Or he finds someone else's object. Whatever it is. I have someone else's money in my hand and I'm not truthful about it. And I'm not giving back the money. And then what makes what's even worse that I make a vow to say that I already returned the money. So now I want to do tshuva. I want to do tshuva. I want to do tshuva. So what, how do I do tshuva? The person, now look at the first Rashi in Pesach Chav Gimel, Ki yechta v'oshem k'shiyakir be'atzmoi. When a person realizes that he sinned, Losho b'tshuva, and now he wants to repent, v'ladas v'lisvadas ki yechta. So what should he do? So the first thing is, v'heshev ezakzei l'asha gotz l'asho yishik asha osha, b'kod n'shuv k'da s'aveda shemotza. First thing is, he returned the money. And that's the, that's step number one. You return the money. Oh, now, this is step number two. Anything that he, they made a vow, he has his friend's money in his pocket, and he said, no, I don't, I don't owe you money. I never owed you no, no business. I don't have a paycheck, whatever it is. He pays. He pays. He pays. Whatever the money is. He withheld a hundred dollars. A thousand dollars, a million dollars, whatever the money is, he pays back to Kedin, the principal, the Chamishasa Yosef Alav. He adds a quarter, a quarter, a fifth. It's a twenty percent. Fifty is twenty percent. Okay, it's like twenty percent. He adds a fifth. Lasher Huloi. To the person, Lasher Huloi, to the person who owns the money. Yitenenu, he gives it to him, Biyem Hashmasi, and that day that he does tshuva. And then he brings a, he goes to the base of Mikdash and he brings us Hashem, Yavi, Lashem, Ay, Otom, Menatsoim, Bekech, Oshem, Makoim, Echibar, Lavakel, Nislach, Loi, and he get, and he was atoned, Alachas, Makoil, Ashayasa, Lashem, Abba. That's been suffering cost? Oh, so why is he paying an extra? 20 or 25 percent depends how you count it. The, 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 why is he paying extra money? We'll talk about it in a moment. But first, let's learn the Rashi because we're focusing on Rashi. Rashi says, La Sheruloi, in brackets, Rashi writes, La Fuki Benoy You have to give it to him. You can't give it to his son or to any messenger to give it to him. That's what the mission says in Baba Kama. Obviously, you can give it to his son, but uh, the, it's not counted that you gave him the money until the money is in the man's hand. You steal it from him, you have to give it back to him. You can't give it to anyone but him. If the man and die, I try, I die. That would be if, if that's something else. But if he's alive, and you gave it to, and you gave it to his son, and then the, the son lost the money in the middle of the road, then it's, you did nothing. Until you're, still liable. Until, until, you're still, you're, until you're liable until the person has the money in his hand. It's better not to send the shalia. Right, right, exactly. And Rashi now explains, Lemisha Amom and Shaloi, to the person, the owner of the money. Yeah. It's a very simple Rashi, right? What could be so complicated about this Rashi? It's a normal. Normal, right? It's so normal that that's the problem. It's too normal. So what does Rashi have to say? 
Now, the Torah says, you give the money, yeah. you steal the money from someone, you have to return the money to him. Maybe you... And as she says, what else would you touch in the Pesach? Because the sin that, the sin, because of the sin that you made. So it's, it's, it's giving to the... And what does the Pesach have to say? Why does the why does the Pesach have to say it? Why does the Pesach have to say it? Obviously, if you steal money from someone, you have to return it to that person. Right. Who else are you going to return it? To his brother? Are you going to give it to your brother? Who are you going to give the money to? If you steal money from someone, you return the money. So the truth is, Pinchas is on to something. But the Rebbe has a, two svaras to, to explain it. I might think that you don't return it to the owner of the money. The Torah has to tell why. Because you're giving an extra, you're giving an extra choymish, 20%, right? Yeah. So why are you giving an extra 20%? There's two ways of looking at it. Maybe it's as a punishment for the person who steals it. it should, he should realize it wasn't just, you know, no pain, no gain. Now he loses. It's the, or you could say, like the Kliyokar says, you could say that uh, it's because of the benefit of the person who, who lost the money. Because a person has money, he can invest the money. Now, he, he, it, was it was out of his possession. So now for, for some length of time, he doesn't have the money. So Torah can't start giving, you know, if it took it away for a year, or for two years, or for a month. Right. So Torah just says a set thing that you add 20%. So which one is it? So you might say, now we'll talk about it soon. The Kliyoka says it's because... It's not because of the Ganev, it's because of the Nigna, not because of the ga Gazlin, it's because of the Nigzal. It's because the person that has money and someone takes it away from him, now for a year he didn't have the money, he was able to invest it, he could have bought a property, he could have bought a business. Well, he could have gave Tzedakah with it. Oh, well, if he gave Tzedakah, yeah. then it's also an investment, it's because right. the Torah says, Asim Bishvil Shetazashet. If you give of charity, you're guaranteed to get good uh, returns on your investment. So either way, he could have invested the it's money, something. and therefore you took away their ability. The Torah says, yeah, so which one is it? So if the Torah didn't say, Lasher Huloi, so I would say, obviously, the $100 I steal, I have to return to him. But the, now the 20 or $25 punishment, Maybe it's it's a punishment for me. So maybe that money should go to Hector. I, I made a vow in Hashem's name in vain. It was a shua sheker. So therefore, maybe I should give the money to charity. So therefore, the Torah has to specify and say, Lasher Huloi. The Torah has to explain that. Because the reason here is it's not so much a punishment. It's true, it's a punishment also for the Ganev, but the main thing the Torah says, and Ashi explaining, Lamisha moment Shaloi, the reason you're giving the extra 20% is because it's his money, and you took it away for a length of time, and he couldn't use that money. I'd so therefore... Gosh, it was compensation for him. Why is it a so, Chaimish? A Chaimish so sounds can, like more of a Knast. That's why like a, a fixed value. Yeah, there is, we, we, can, we can do a complicated math and we'll get there, but let's leave it for later. But there is, there is, there is a logic why a choymish. But the, but the, uh, the, the, so, the, so that's why the Torah has to tell it to us. That's why the Torah has to tell it to us. I'm thinking, one second, I'm thinking that he get this 20% to teach him not to do it again. Okay. Right. That, that's a knack. If you would say that it's that's to teach not him not to do it again, yeah. so, then, so then you could say, so why should he give the money to the person that he took the money? Maybe the money has to go to charity. The charity goes that's to why the Torah has to say no. La Huloi. That even the extra knas, the extra 20%, you have to give La Huloi. How about Kefu and Oh. So now, when the Torah talks about the person who steals and he's caught by, by witnesses that he steals, he pays double. So the Torah says, Shnayim Yishalem. He pays double. Over there, the language, Shnayim Yishalem, it's clear that you'll give it because Yishalem, you have to pay. Over here it says, Chamish Yisoy Yosef. It's a Yisof. So here it's not so clear because the Torah says it's called extra. Another thing here, 
The Torah she says that this 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 extra punishment only comes for a person who wants to do tshuva. If we catch if if two witnesses, a guy says, "Well, I, I don't have your money. I never stole the money. I, what, your paycheck? I pay you back your pay. Well, whatever it is. Yeah, he swears. And then we have two witnesses and, and catch him. He doesn't pay an extra twenty percent. Like Rashi says, that's only a person. It's only a man that's coming to do tshuva. So one might say to him, "Hey, wait a minute. It, it's not like kefil double." When a person steals and we catch him with witnesses, the punishment is that he has to pay double. So obviously, who do you pay double to? The person you stole it from. Here, you don't, you don't pay an extra 20% unless you came yourself. And to Bezden and you said, but, and you should know, I lied and I feel terrible, what should I do? But if the witness come, there's no tshuva for that. So I may think for a second, hey, wait a minute. So. Maybe that money, that right, that money doesn't belong to the nixal. Therefore, the Torah has to specify and say no. The Torah has to say la shed hu loy. The Torah has to say la shed hu loy. The Torah has to clarify. Another point here is that the Torah. Uh, it's interesting that the Torah says an extra three words because the Torah keeps on saying here the word la mitoy, his friend. Um, the Torah keeps on saying, "Oy oshek es a misoy," right? And here it's la sher huloi. So Rashi, that's what Rashi is saying. The Torah is not only saying; the Torah is explaining itself. The Torah is explaining, and that's really what the Kliyoker is saying. The Kliyoker is saying that it's not the money that you give is not just a punishment that the Ganav shouldn't steal again. It's because. A person who loses money for a length of time, they could have invested the money. So therefore, that knas is for the money they could have earned at that time. That's what Ashi is saying. So now, so what is it, a knas or, or, it's, or it's compensation? It's compensation. That's what the Kliyoka says. Oh, uh, for Chesidim, for, for we learned the, the Tanya. The Tanya says that if anyone steals money from you or anyone does something wrong to you, there's no point being angry at that person. Why? Because it comes from heaven. If he didn't do it, someone else was doing it. So what's the point of being angry at him? You mean it's all from Hashem? It's all from Hashem. Right. So then, the out of him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doesn't mean doesn't take him to court. You don't have to be angry at him. You can take him to court. With singing. He can, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so okay. So you don't have to. But the question can be asked now. The question can be asked like this. So, oh, so and then the altar says, "Why? So why does he punish that person?" So the answer is, who asked him? God said, "The harvest luchim lamakim." There could be many. God could find other messengers. Who asked that person to be the bad messenger? It's, he gets punished for being the bad messenger. But I have to know that if I lost a hundred dollars, it's not that he. This person can never hurt me. No one could hurt me. It's I have to talk to to, to have a business with the Rebbeinu Shalom. I have no reason to get angry. There's no point to get angry at another person. It's I have to have my business with the Rebbeinu Shalom. Okay, that's what the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya. So now a person is going to come along and say, if that's the case, so why? What's the point of giving him an extra? 20%? God said that he's supposed to lose the money. But then now you could... Uh, back, but now it's coming oh, back. So exactly. Because then you could say, why do I have to return the money? God said that he has to lose the money. <laughs> but the answer is simple. God, God didn't say for how long he has to lose the money. money. Maybe he's supposed to lose the money for 10 days. Right. And now it's time to return it. We don't know. Right. So right. the job... Right. Huh? They made it, made it worse. They didn't right. Make it worse. They got punished for making it worse. Exactly. So therefore, just like you have to return the actual money, because maybe it's same thing here. Maybe true that God wanted him to lose the hundred dollars, but now that it's time to return it, it's also time to compensate him for the money that he lost that he couldn't invest. It. Do you think it was a lesson for the person that lost the money? For sure, it's a lesson for the person who lost the money. For whatever reason. Right, exactly. Reason. But it's the, but it's not my business because it's a lot of times 
the attitude that if I wrong someone, I could say to myself, listen, it, he deserved it. It's coming from God. So why I have to apologize? But the answer is, the answer is, it's not my business. Right, right. Maybe, you know, maybe this is all God apart, God's plan, that the person needs to learn a lesson. So for whatever reason, he needs to be insulted. I had, I was silly enough to take on myself the job to insult that person. Okay. Now, God wants yeah, that he should be... Yeah, the yeah. so yeah. therefore, in general, the attitude should be, if I insult someone, or I wrong someone, that I should apologize, right. sincerely. And right. I can't say to myself, oh, very deep uh, theology. Listen, if it happened, that means God wanted it to happen. So I was the silly messenger. But okay, you don't shoot the messenger. No, but... But maybe God wanted, it should be a temporary lesson for him. Right. But now it's time to soothe the person's pain. So just like over here, we say if I withhold someone's money and I lie, so I have to later give him 20%. And that 20% doesn't go to charity, it goes to him. Why does it go to him? Because he deserves it because he didn't have the money for the time that he could have invested it. The same thing here, if I insult someone or I wrong someone in any way, we learn from this that Lashed I have to I have to apologize to that person and, and not say, oh, listen, God God made it to happen that way. <coughs> because I never know why what's God's plan. What's the Ashgocha Protest? What's there's a beautiful story I heard from Rabbi. You just give the money. You no, you have to you have to ask for Mechila. Yes, you're obligated to ask for Mechila. That's a Broton Khosha Mishpat. The uh, Rabbi uh, Halberstam worked in the home of the Rebbe. The Rebbe, in the last uh, few years, was an elderly woman. She was weak. And the Rebbe asked that he would take her maybe, you know, to Long Island. There was a park that she liked to go to. She would sit on the bench and in a nice, quiet place. So uh, there was a regular route they would drive. And they said there was one day that uh, one of the blocks were closed. So he drove around. And at the corner, you could see there was a little bit of commotion. There was a, there was a police car there, and there, was a, there were movers taking out stuff from a house. So, um, so, uh, so they drove by, and a, two, three blocks later, that Ebbetson said to him, could you drive back, Just check out what's going on over there. So he parked the car, he walked out, and apparently there was a Jewish-Russian family that came to America, and they were behind them paying the rent. So they had an eviction notice, and they they didn't, you know. But finally, you know, the sheriff came, and that was it. So uh, they were being evicted of the apartment, and uh, they were in distress. So the Davidson said, you know, my father told me, and I remember once sitting with him in a park, that whenever a Jew sees something, it's Ashkoch It's a, it's a, a, yeah. So I, if if. If I noticed that there were cops, and now we know what it is, so it's a She says, "Go find out. How much? Find out how much money they owe on the uh, on what was the debt." So right. he found out what was the debt, and she uh, she took out a personal checkbook. She wrote out a check, and uh, she asked that uh, Rabbi Halberstam should go pay up and make sure that actually that uh, stop the eviction. Uh, stop the eviction, and. Um, he went back, and they couldn't believe it. Like the movers were like flabbergasted. Miracle. Something like this never happens. <laughs> this some stranger stopped their car, and you know. Wow. But uh, yeah. but that's uh, you know they they you know they were all in shock, and then they they were told to bring the stuff back into the house, and then the neighbors came out. And there was like, what's happening over here? So the Davidson said, "Come on, get, get quickly back into the car. I want to leave now." Wow. So. Um, so that that's the 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 thing is it's a process. We don't know. So if sometimes we 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 are unfortunately in a position that we hurt someone, we can't say to ourselves, you know what? It, it, came, it came from heaven. Okay, maybe he was supposed to. <laughs> maybe it's true. The person was supposed to learn a lesson, but it doesn't mean that now that now that that, that it's, now it's over. He learned his lesson. Now he needs now he needs to get his money back. He needs to be compensated, and he needs to get an apology. Fresh. So it's therefore, fresh. if I'm the person that insulted or whatever, wronged another yid, I have to apologize sincerely. I'm both